with how she can fly slow with flat. Look at that ground effect like didn't even want to touch down. Welcome back to Motion RC everyone, I'm James and in this video we're doing a step-by-step -step assembly, an overview and uh, a spec rundown of the brand new Freewing Twin 70mm PJ50 Business Jet that you see here. Um, I just built this plane at the point of this video, I've yet to take it outside and fly it, but unbelievable from taking it out of the box to getting it together, um, now seeing her in front of me, like the AL37 before her, um, she is just stunning and large and all around just a well put together, uh, well designed aircraft that I can't wait to get out and, and fly. So real quick, some of the things that you're already seeing that I love about this model. Decals already applied, so they're already done. The window's done, the door, everything like that. So when you pull it out of the box, you don't have to worry about any of that. I love the nacelles up top. Reminds me of like the A10, uh, if you will, but twin 70s inside with the plastic around the leading edge. I love that. So that's like chromed out. Um, plastic there. You have LED lights that you're seeing all around. So I'm seeing one on the back of the vertical stab um, strobe. We got strobe underneath, two lights right where the wings meet in the fuselage, takeoff light here, and your nav lights, your red and your green on the outside. And all around just a stunning jet that only took 16 screws to put together and a little bit of foam tag because the fuselage does come in two pieces. You do glue the fuselage together and then for all the little accessory bits that are all around the aircraft, we're gonna glue those in, but we'll get to that in a little bit. So right now, let's first run through the spec, then we'll show you an unboxing. We'll do the step-by-step -step assembly and then I could walk around the plane towards the end of this video. So let's start with the product specs. Alright guys, the PJ50 from Freewing, she's a big bird. She's 68.1 inches long or 1730 millimeters and her wingspan is 66.9 inches wide or 1700 millimeters. Now as far as what's inside, the motors, you have two in-runner motors. They're 2952-2100 kV brushless in-runner motors. You have two 60 amp ESCs with an 8 amp U-back attached. And again, as we said, the EDF is a 12 blade fan, 70 millimeter uh, shroud. And she's made of EPO and the white is painted white. It is not bare foam. So everything you see on the plane that's white is actually painted white. You've got beautiful trailing link nose gear and mains on, this, on the uh, struts. We've got eight servos. You have two digital Metal Gear servos in the elevator, and then the rest are hybrid uh, servos, nine gram, um, all around the aircraft. And as far as recommended battery goes, you can run her on anything from a 4000 to a 6000 6S battery. Plenty of space inside for that. And you're gonna need at least a seven channel receiver um, to run this aircraft, because you're gonna need one extra slot for the BEC. So that'll do it for the specs. Now let's show you how it looked when it came out of the box. So now real quick upon taking it out, you're gonna see uh, you get your blue tape, which is nice to see, always love to see the blue tape. And like the AL37, the box isn't as big as you'd think it would be. Um, I remember there are a lot, there are a few aircraft that are much smaller than the AL37 or the PJ50 that have larger boxes. Um, just the way they design it, I'm always impressed. But uh, pulling off the top of the box art, you're gonna see inside, Again, the foam comes in like two sections, so the top section is going to hold one of your wings, and then a few of your ancillary bits up there, you're going to have your baggie with all your screws and your glue and your peripherals and your ribbon cables, you'll see that. Then you have the little wing fences, and they attach to the wings just like any missiles from Freewing, that MWS railing system, so very easy to get the winglets on and off, just like the AL-37 as well. Then when you take off the top part of the foam, you get to your second wing comes out. And again, you see, it's just, it's beautiful. Everything's already, again, the paint's already there, the lights are installed, the gear's installed, and all your linkages are already installed too. Uh, with servo covers, it just looks really good coming out of the box. And you can see on the front of it too, um, where you're gonna attach your ribbon cables. And also looking at the wing, what I love too, they molded in the CG marks. So you can see that there and things like that. So very easy access uh, to get in there. 
Then taking a look at the nacelles, again, one big piece back here. And what I like about this model too, the back half of the fuselage, um, it's color coded as far as attaching the motors that we'll see in a little bit. So they have the, the wires are, you know, again, color coded. So you don't have to worry about plugging them in and then having to undo it because you've, you've plugged in one of your motor wires the wrong way and then you got to reverse it. So that was very good that they did that. Then you have your vertical stab piece again and then your back, your elevator. So that's going to attach up top. That has a light on it too. And just looking at the main piece of the fuselage or the forward part of the fuselage, again, the windows are already pre-installed. Brass eyelets is where, what's going to hold in the wing. And you can just see some of the chrome paint on the front of the nose. And then taking a look inside, you see the blue box in there and plenty of space. Um, you're not going to be, just like the AL37 before her, you're not going to have any problem uh, fitting in all of your electronics if you want a gyro, your receiver, and of course, whatever battery you choose to put in there. So there she is out of the box. Let's get started with a step-by-step -step assembly. Okay, so now when you open up your manual, the first part of the assembly you're gonna see is gluing the fuselage uh, together. So you have this back part of the fuselage and the front part. The back part already has two of the carbon spars attached to it, and you can see where those go. But one thing you're gonna wanna do first, you're gonna have to route all your wires. So when you pulled out the spar, from the unboxing, you will see that they gave you what we call the go get them wire or your pull through wire. Uh, you basically want to pull everything across. And what you're going to be pulling through here is going to be your, your battery, your EC5 connector. That's going to come through the fuselage. You're going to have your two elevator and your rudder and an LED light lead that's going to come through. And then they've already wired together your ESCs for your throttle. You want to get that, that all pulled through. So you can see there's a little hole inside the aft section of the fuselage you want to run it through there first then pull it through the main part of the fuselage then once you have that pretty much ready to go as i have it laid here then i'm going to get to gluing and what i always like to do what i think you should do whenever you glue foam to foam especially on this because it's going to be painted foam um, i like to scuff up both sides everywhere i know the foam's going to meet each other I just take a razor blade and I score it back and forth, make crisscrosses, X's, whatever you want to do. And then you're going to use the glue provided, it's like a foam tack. What I do is I provide, I, I will liberally apply it to one side, just one. And then you want to, when you have it all ready to go, your wires are out of the way, make the connection and then pull it apart. You know, hold it there for about five seconds, then pull it apart. You'll see stringies and wait about 60 to 90 sec seconds. That allows the air uh, to get into the mixture. It, it's gonna create a tighter bond in the long run. And then when that's after 90 seconds, push it back together. And here I like to let gravity do the work. So I stand it up on its nose in a corner or somewhere where I know it's not gonna fall over. And then I'll just walk away from it for about 15, 20 minutes, allow it a chance to uh, cure because you don't want to get started putting on the heavy weight like these nacelles, which is going to be your next step, onto uh, an uncured model. So allow, allow time for that glue to harden before you proceed to step two. All right, so now step two is going to be involved. All you have to do is meet the connection for your motors. So you're going to see inside the nacelles, as I said earlier, that uh, it's all color-coded, so you can pull through the wiring that's in the fuselage. You want to make all six connections, three for each motor. And then once that's connected, it's going to fit snug like a glove. And it'll actually kind of snap in if you press on it. So you just make sure that you'll see there's a little cutout in the foam. You just want to make sure your wires are, you know, through that little cutout resting there as you place the nacelles on top. And then you're going to go over to your baggie and you're going to use the PA 3 by 10 millimeters. They'll be the only package. There's only four different types of screws. They have their six total of these screws in the bag. You're going to use four of them uh, here. So it'll be the only packet, package that has six screws in it. So let's grab four of them and just screw down your nacelles to the fuselage. So now once you're done with that, you can move the entire fuselage uh, off to the side. And now we're going to work on our tail section. So step three is going to be installing the horizontal and vertical stabilizer together uh, before you attach it to the fuselage. Because if you're going to see your elevators, they have two wires. They're going to have to be put through the tail. So there's a nice duct right through your vertical stabilizer. 
And that also has two wires, but we'll get to that in a second. Bring your two elevator leads through so you can use the go get them wire. And then once you have those two pulled through, then all you're gonna do is meet it up. You'll see the two plastic holes that are gonna accept the screws and then one nice spar in there. It all meets up very nicely, press it together. And here's where you're gonna use the same two screws you just, the same type of screw you just used for the nacelles. There are only two of those left. That's what you're gonna use here to attach the horizontal stabilizer to the vertical stabilizer. Those are the three by 10 millimeter screws. So now once you have that piece done, now we're gonna make the connection to the fuselage. Now in the back of the fuselage, you should see four wires. They'll be labeled two of them for the elevator, one for the rudder, and then you'll see one for the light. That's for the strobe light up top. So make all those connections, make sure polarity is correct on all four of those. And then very simply, you'll see there's a spar already. So a nice hole where it's gonna fit. Just press in your vertical stabilizer. And now we're gonna use four of the flush mounted screws. They're also three by 10 millimeters, but you can see they got the flat heads on top. They're gonna to be flush and two on each side. Get those screwed in and you are done with the tail section. So now moving on to what would be step five is now installing our main wing. So the thicker carbon spar goes in the middle and the thinner spar will go to the back. They only fit in one spot, so make sure you line that up right. And when you press them together, just make sure the wiring's out of the way. And now when you have the wings, you're looking at the top of the wing, so the part that's gonna be inside the fuselage when it connects. There are two holes there. That's where you're gonna use the M4 by eight millimeter screws. So again, it's the only package that has two screws in it. Screw those together, and when you're done, you have ostensibly one big wing piece. Now you can grab the ribbon cables that come with your model, and here's where you wanna get them attached. Much easier to attach them now uh, than trying. You'll never be able to attach them if you connect the wing to the fuselage first. So get those ribbon cables attached. And then once you have that attached, you can undo the wiring because um, the blue box inside has a lot of different slots for you to place your lights. So I, un I undid all those and brought them into the fuselage. Now you're gonna flip your fuselage and your tail over. So you're gonna need a plane stand here. And this is where you're gonna drop those wires in and you wanna make sure you meet the, uh, the wing. It's gonna fit perfectly uh, when you line it up. And then afterwards, you're gonna use those four by 16 millimeter screws. Now they only have threading towards the end of them. Uh, these are the same screws that came with the MIG and I love these. The beauty is when you wanna take the wing off, all you do is you unscrew. It'll unscrew from the fuselage, but then the screw will remain in the wing so it won't fall out. So it takes a little while to get them in the first time because you gotta screw through the wing so it'll be tight, then it'll loosen up, and then it catches into the fuselage itself to uh, give it a firm connection. So just give it a little time uh, when you're screwing it in. But remember, those, those captive screws are great because they, uh, they won't leave your, you won't lose them when you have to take the wing off to transport and such. So once you have the main wing attached, the first thing I did from here is I wanted to get my receiver plugged in. So again, you'll need at least seven channels for that. Now, once that's all good and you're bound up, that's when I drop the gear, and now we can work on the peripherals and the decorative bits. So the first things first, again, those wing tips, like I said, um, they only fit one way, and they work like any other free wing missile railing system. It's just a slot and groove. So you, 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 you fit it over the hole, and then you press it on and slot it. And if you want to, you can uh, add a little glue there. If you don't think you're ever going to take them off, I couldn't imagine taking them off once they're on, so I'm gonna glue them down a little bit just to give it a little extra uh, protection when I'm in the air. And now you have all the decorated parts, all your antennas and your fins, these white plastic pieces and the silver pieces. So you're gonna see the uh, fuselage has all the cutouts where they're gonna fit. So you don't have to make any sort of cuts, it's already there molded in, you just gotta use the glue that came with it and press them on. So I started with the uh, antennas on the front there's three going down each side, right, right underneath the cockpit. And then you can see on the manual, all the antenna sections are all here. So you have, you have about five on top of the plane. You have two fins in the vertical tail. You have three antenna that go under the plane as well. And once you get those all installed, you are done with the assembly of the PJ-50. 
So there you have it guys, that's a step-by-step -step assembly, again, unboxing, overview, um, spec rundown. So now taking a look at her in front of me, again, right now I have a 6006S inside. She's got some nice weight to her. Um, she's big, uh, obviously I have to keep her this way or we'll probably lose her on our camera at some times, just like the uh, AL37 before. I couldn't even get that one on the table if I wanted to, but um, she's a nice big, uh, big presence and I know it's an aircraft that I hope a lot of people had asked for when the AL37 came out We saw tons of comments. Oh, they're gonna make more commercial um, Private type jets. You got to do a private type jet. So uh, here she is in all her glory And we're so excited to be able to bring this out to you um, to sort of close out the year here and um I'm excited to get outside and fly. By the time you see this video, you'll probably already have seen it in the air, but um, this is just my first impressions of her. I only opened the box about an hour ago as we were filming here, uh, putting it together, and I'm super excited. She's obviously, even for me, I knew it was coming. I've seen pictures, but it's different when she's on the table before you and just uh, in all her glory. I'm really excited about this. So taking a look, again, let's, let's go down to the gear. So I'll press on it here. Trailing link, Alex can show you on the uh, the nose. So Olio with the trailing link, and then trailing link on the back, which is great. I'm expecting this model to be just like the AL37, where the fun of it is going to be on those touch and goes. You know, that's what the beauty of the AL37 um, is how beautiful and soft you can float her down on those mains, because um, you obviously want your passengers to be happy on a land. I'm sure we've all been on a plane where you land and boom and you hit the runway and you're like, oh, that was scary. We try not to do that when we're flying our aircraft. But um, all around, just looking at all the parts, again, I love that I don't have to do the windows. I remember that being a little tough to do on the AL37 for people um, at the start. But uh, so I love that the decals there are already done. Um, and I love that it's only 16 screws. If I really wanted to take it apart, I could easily take four screws out here and I could take the tail off if I need to, just meet those four connections in the tail. I could use four screws, take the wing apart. If I need to separate the wing, another two screws, it's pretty easy. So uh, that's what I love with the whole ribbon cable thing. So um, that works really well. And the other thing I love about this, again, as we showed you, the CG marks are marked on the aircraft. So um, I haven't had a chance to CG, so I, I wanna make, I'm gonna do that now and spend some time. I'll put the CG information in the flight video um, for that point, but uh, I love that it's right there so I don't have to bring a tool to measure. I'm just gonna go by the uh, markings on the wing and go for it as soon as I fly it. And uh, again, the lighting on it, everything about it is just, you know, she's a bit, She's bad. She's bad. I'm so excited that it's here. Um, we were dying for uh, a release like this, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the YouTube video in the comment section, or check the description of this video. You can head over to Hobby Squad, because that's where a ton of our customers are going to be talking about this baby. Um, so you can jump into the forums over there and uh, talk to people about it. And as always, click the product link is in the description as well, because you'll be able to pre-order this thing um, now, if you're watching this, I assume the pre-order is open, so head on down there and pre-order it. And if you're watching this in the future, it's available now, so click the link and order it um, before I'm assuming they're going to run out really fast. A lot of people are going to want this one. But again, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time at Motion RC.